Why did the exit go so south so fast? And where is President Biden to address the American people now? White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says we will hear from the president eventually. He is focused on ensuring that the mission, which is to secure that airport and to continue these evacuations, that that mission continues uh, and is brought to a positive conclusion. That is his overriding focus right now. He's deeply engaged on it. And yes, at the right point, he will absolutely address the American people. James Carafano is vice president of foreign policy at the Heritage Foundation. Waleed Ferris is a Fox News national security and foreign affairs analyst. Waleed, James, great to have you on the program to break this down. James, I'm going to lean on your military expertise right now. What is the situation for protecting Americans and those Afghanis who helped us on that tarmac right now? How would you put it? Right. So this is actually a nightmare scenario. So there's two options here. One is, is the Taliban can hold everybody hostage, all 6,000, everybody at the airport. They could starve them out. And, and, they, and they don't have to attack the Americans to do that. All they have to do is, is to make sure planes can't safely leave. So that's, that's the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is the Taliban just sits there with their arms folded and they watch a chaotic and disastrous uh, withdrawal and they, and they let this protracted humiliation play out, and then they can turn to the world and they go, look at the Americans leaving with their tails between their legs. Wow. Wally Ferris, we have just gotten the word that the president now is set to speak at 3.45 p.m. today. And while James Sullivan in the White House was defending the idea that the president had not spoken yet, there's been a lot that's happened in the time gap and will have by 3.45 this afternoon because it's already nightfall there. And that's many, many more hours of whatever could unfold, as James has just detailed. Your take on the situation with the Taliban and the United States. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity. The problem that I see with the administration, including the president and his uh, officials, is that they may have expected one thing. Taliban did something else. Remember, there was an agreement from last year, which was taken by the Biden administration changed. They had a different strategy. Instead of adopting the strategy of region by region and empowering first the Afghan army, then the Afghan society, they just said, we're leaving all of Afghanistan and told the president and the government of Afghanistan and the armed forces, hmm. which explains mm -hmm. why this happened, that they're not going to fight the Taliban because there is a deal and the Taliban promised them stuff. So the Taliban promised one thing and then they achieved. Are we surprised? Uh, that the Taliban would make a promise they wouldn't keep? If it was me, I would say, of course, from the beginning, don't engage the Taliban, engage the Afghan government, engage the Taliban only and their allies in the region when they disarm and they become a political party. You know, we have given back the Taliban what we have struggled for for 20 years. Yeah. Well, look, politically, I, I would just ask it this way. It, it would seem that former President Trump and current President Biden would have gotten much the same information. They both had the same plan to pull out the troops. And, and that is a popular thing with the American people and with our American servicemen and women, because we, we couldn't define an end game there any longer. So we totally get that. That's not the issue. It is the pullout that is the issue. And James, if President Trump at one point had wanted to try to deal with the Taliban, that didn't happen. He listened to generals. He listened to whomever right. he listened to. What happened with Joe well, Biden, the president, to think that he could be the one to make them change? Yeah, this is, this is easy to explain. I don't think it's a military failure. I don't think it's an intel failure. Well, he just kind of alluded to this as the Biden, Biden himself made a calculation that the Taliban would let us leave. And then if things mm -hmm. went to hell in the handbasket later, the Biden administration would just say, oh, it wasn't our fault we weren't there. But what he doesn't understand is, is in this part of the world, honor is power. And the Taliban would never miss an opportunity to humiliate the United States going out the door. Mm. So I'm sure Biden would thought they'd be idiots not to just let us leave. But from the Taliban's perspective, this was an opportunity that couldn't be couldn't be passed by. And the problem is, is the Biden, they had no plan B. They, they were briefed that this could happen, but they had no plan to what do we do if the Taliban actually attack us as we're leaving? And that's where we, why we are where we are. But, James, you and I both know those generals had plan B. 
You know they I'm, did. I'm Somebody sure they didn't did. listen to it. But I mean, contingency sure plans are something that the them. military are amazing for. But you got to listen to them. I, I want to get to this. General Jack Keane on America's Newsroom a short time ago on the Taliban taking over Kabul, which is where that airport is, which is where we're trying to move our people out of. Let's watch. C-17s are attempting to fly out of the Kabul uh, airport. Uh, it's a stark reminder of what defeat really looks like and the suffering that people uh, are going to experience as a result of that defeat. When it really gets down to it, this Taliban victory that we're seeing right before our eyes is something President Biden truly owns. Wow. Did you hear that, Waleed Ferris? He called it a Taliban victory. And, and you say honor equals power? They just scooped up some. We just handed them a way to prophesize and gear yeah. up to bigger than ever before. And we know the leader of Taliban, and Wally, this is where I want to get to with you, it's pretty close to al-Qaeda. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the same thing uh, with some differences. But what is important here, I've been monitoring social media and the Arab media and the international media. What the Taliban propaganda and their allies across from Afghanistan all the way to Syria are saying to the peoples of the region, we don't realize that what's happening in Kabul's airport is not just for the local population. It's a wave of shock. Uh, the jihadists are telling the people, this is the price of being an ally to the United States. <laughs> you can't imagine what's happening. I mean, the American public needs to be informed about what's happening on the psychological level in the region. It's a complete disaster. In my are we at war? Are we at before, before I get to that question, because I had made that point, that came from the United Nations, by the way. That's not my take on the current Taliban leadership and al-Qaeda being close, that came from the UN. That's problematic for us. Like, we, we haven't even glimpsed in the many ways that those people have been thinking about hurting us since 9-11. And then Biden's administration puts a target on our backs down there by saying we're going to wrap up originally <laughs> by September 11th. I mean, James, oh. you can't even write that. Well, you have to realize that on September 11th this year, the Taliban will own more territory than they did on September 11, 2001. That is a huge advertising campaign. And there's two things. One is, is the terrorist, the potential for a terrorist sanctuary in Afghanistan. But the other is this is basically a global ad for a resurgence of, of terrorism. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really is the worst of all possible scenarios. Real quickly, and then I want to move on. Uh, Waleed, what does this mean now going forward? You were mentioning our enemies and those who would gear up to hit us. I mean, the timeline on that previously was, well, it might take them two decades to come back. And it, did somebody just speed up the timeline? And what does it look like now? I don't know what happened in the negotiations in Qatar, in Doha. I think Congress should get into the bottom of this because this is where we were promised. And that was the, the previous time. administration. Mm -hmm. The previous administration negotiated, had a plan. The current administration took the plan and modified the strategy. Mm. We got to know the how they did that. Well, I don't know. That's that's why Congress should come and say what did happen to the original plan, which is take it region by region, secure that the Afghani forces are in control, and then we support them, and then we withdraw. We just offered Afghanistan all of it, and then we messaged them. On top of it, we told them in the media, many of our officials, oh, Kabul will, will fall in 20 days, this area will fall in 60 days. What is this? We are telling the enemy, we are telling the Taliban how many days they need to take these areas. They considered it what? A green light. It was a disaster. Yeah. I mentioned earlier, and again, the president of the United States, uh, his comms team just announcing that he will speak today at 3.45 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and I, I talked to you about that single statement from President Biden so far. In it, he put the blame on President Trump. He said this, quote, when I came to office, I inherited a deal cut by my predecessor. That left the Taliban in the strongest position militarily since 2001. Now, Waleed, you were just saying that critics don't agree with that. James, your quick take. Well, look, I mean, the Biden's got three big problems. You know, they said Americans don't care about Afghanistan, and I think that was their assessment. But they lied to America. They humiliated America. And now Americans are really worried about terrorists coming back and getting them. That's three huge problems that I don't think this wow. administration anticipated. Gentlemen, thank you both. James Waleed, appreciate your expertise and your time to get us started in focus.